one of my favorite funny lines from Pirates of the Caribbean was uh, when Jack Sparrow walks up and says, Weddings! I love weddings! And if you love weddings, you're going to love Psalm 45 because, believe it or not, you're in it. I'll explain more in just a moment. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister, and I am one of the pastors at Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years' period of time. And if it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you on this journey with us together. Subscribe to our channel. Click the bell for notifications. We drop these devotionals every Monday through Saturday. We read just a little bit of the Scripture together and pull one thing out of it to help us to draw closer to Jesus and be more like Him. So join us on the journey. So, uh, yeah, the idea of us being part of a wedding that's actually in the Psalms, while we're in the middle of these earthly king and royal enthronement Psalms, there's these intersections that we see. We saw one yesterday between good and bad kings, and today we see the intersection between this and not just the earthly king, but the eventual king over all, which is Jesus. And we're going to look at that connection together today as we study Psalm 45 together. So if you will, turn in your Bibles or read the screen with us as we go through. My heart is stirred by a noble theme as I recite my verses for the king. My tongue is a pen of a skillful writer. You are the most excellent of men, and your lips have been anointed with grace since God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your side, you mighty one. Clothe yourself with splendor and majesty. In your majesty, ride forth victoriously in the cause of truth, humility, and justice. Let your right hand achieve awesome deeds. Let your sharp arrows pierce the hearts of the king's enemies. Let the nations fall beneath your feet. Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. Your love, you love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. All your robes are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia, from palaces adorned with ivory. The music of the strings makes you glad. Daughters of kings are among your honored women. At your right hand is the royal bride in gold in the gold of Ophir. Listen, daughter, and pay careful attention. Forget your people and your father's house. Let the king be enthralled by your beauty. Honor him, for he is your Lord. The city of Tyre will come with a gift. People of wealth will seek your favor. All glorious is the princess within her chamber. Her gown is interwoven with gold. In embroidered gar garments, she is led to the king. Her virgin companions follow her. Those brought to be with her. Led in, the, in, led in with joy and gladness, they enter the palace of the king. Your sons will take the palace of your fathers. You will make them princes throughout the land. I will perpetuate your memory through all generations. Therefore, the nations will praise you forever and ever. Well, a couple of things to note from this passage is, is first of all, if you look at the very top, it says that the sons of Korah uh, composed this as a wedding song. For the director of music. Well, that is that is hugely important because now we're talking about a, a kingly uh, glory, if you will, an earthly glory. But it's more than that because if we look in Hebrews chapter 1, uh, the author of Hebrews identifies this psalm specifically as one that connects with Jesus as being God and king over all. So let's look at that connection real quick together. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. This whole chapter is comparing angels versus the Son. And it says, But about the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. This is a, a passage of Scripture that is talking directly about um, Jesus. And it's saying that Psalm 45 isn't just about an earthly king wedding. It's about the eventual king's wedding with his bride. And as a matter of fact, all weddings eventually connect back to Jesus and his bride, the church. Ephesians chapter 5, which we quote oftentimes uh, about husbands and wives, 
is really primarily about Christ and the church, of which husbands and wives are a shadow of. Let's take a look at that together in Ephesians 5, verses 31 through 33. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you must also love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. So this passage of scripture that we're looking at in Ephesians 5, Hebrews chapter 1, and Psalm 45 are all talking about a wedding, right? And this wedding eventually, and the reality of this wedding, is actually Christ in the church. And the shadow of this wedding, or the reflection of this wedding, are our marriages that we have husbands and wives to one another. Or in the case of in the case of a king of Israel, the king of Israel to his bride. And all of these are supposed to reflect the self-sacrificial nature of Christ in the church. This is how the king is supposed to rule. And in the end, the wedding feast of the Lamb, where we get where we as the bride are made holy because of what he's done for us, is the ultimate reality of what marriage ought to be about. So as a king rejoices and the kingdom rejoices when a good king is married, it's because it reflects what Christ is going to do with the church. You know, it's awesome to think that we're going to have, we have a king who cares enough about us to die on the cross for us, raised from the dead to make us holy and show the self-sacrificial nature that we should have in our commitments to one another. So I pray that if you've been having a hard time being self-sacrificial to your spouse, that you'll remember that this is what Jesus ultimately does for us. We're in this wedding feast that's mentioned in Psalm 45, and we should recreate that wedding feast in our own marriages, reflecting the nature of God in our marriages, in that self-sacrificial sacrifice so that our wives will see how much we truly love them. So I pray that helps you today. I pray that helps you in your marriage. And I pray that helps you look forward to a wedding all of us get to partake in because Jesus is making us holy. God bless you, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow.